Uh, hello, uh, the ones who doesn't know me, uh, my name is Antonio Vestre, and the ones who know me, yes, it's true, it's before 10 a.m. and I'm here talking. So, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> At 11, I will die, but it's all right, it's okay. So, uh, I don't know if we can do something with the lights, because I don't know if you can see this properly, and I want you to see the screen more than my face, because uh, for <laughs> it's before 10 in the morning. So, yeah. oh, brilliant. Okay, well, let's uh, start with this. Uh, this is a title that I just made up uh, today because uh, it's quite poetic, <laughs> somehow. Virtual realities and the valley of selective blindness. Uh, doesn't matter if you don't understand what that means because uh, I barely understand what that means, so it's okay. It's before 10 a.m. again, so it's normal. Okay, let's start with something very, very boring, like definitions of words. Let's start with certainty. Uh, certainty is basically to believe uh, without any doubt. So you don't have absolutely any doubt that uh, something will happen. You saw it a million times, you have proof that it works, so it will work again, basically. So, oh, the sun, nice. <laughs> Is it that early? <laughs> okay. So you have no idea that, I mean, you have total idea <laughs> that this will happen, so you're totally certain uh, that, that it will happen. But faith, in the other hand, even though it will sound very similar, is a total trust or confidence in someone or something. There is a difference. The difference is that in faith you hope. You bet that it will happen. You think that, yes, it will, uh, you hope that it will happen. But the total trust, the total, total trust is uh, an ideal. It never happens. I mean, you are never totally true, totally sure about that. You always have a little uh, doubt, of course. Uh, and uh, we know that there are some glitches in our theory. We know that there are some... Um, how to say it, some exceptions that sometimes it fails, uh, we know that, but we have this uh, selective uh, blindness. We say that, no, we, ah, no, 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 it will happen, yes, 99% sure, yes, uh, it will happen. That's faith. So that's the difference. I'm certain it's 100% faith, who knows? It de depends how your blindness can, can manage it. No? So well, let's uh, start with the most important part, me. That's uh, me when I was around four years old, okay. Uh, why I'm uh, coming to be, well, uh, because I wanted to tell you about my first experience of faith. My first experience of faith uh, wasn't a church. My first experience of, ch of faith uh, was uh, Spider-Man. I believed I was a Spider-Man. <laughs> and yeah, I, I had faith that it was true. Uh, I wasn't certain, I mean, it's not certainty. No, it, it's not certainty. I, it couldn't be certain because my Spider-Man world wasn't exactly free, free of glitches. I mean, there were some little details that didn't work out. No, like for example, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Which, if you believe that you're a Spider-Man, it is an issue not to be able to do that. Uh, I couldn't climb walls like Spider-Man, uh, and I found in a very painful way that I didn't have the Spider-Man super strength. But I have faith. I have faith. <laughs> you see, basically I was, uh, I was just choosing selectively to be blind towards those problems. So when I was playing with my friends, uh, well, that's not me, but I can totally say that it's me and you will believe it, uh, is uh, I had no problems. I was living in this perfect Spider-Man world. I was a Spider-Man, nobody could tell me the opposite, okay? Of course, if in those times I will have the virtual reality that we have now, I will totally be a Spider-Man. I will totally be Spider-Man going around everywhere. It will be amazing. And my glitches will be much smaller, no less failures. And uh, it will be easy for me to put a blind eye towards those details of not being able to do things like Spider-Man, no? Now, the virtual reality, you know, what will be the problem? It's amazing for me to be Spider-Man in the virtual reality, I will love it. But there is a worry, not exactly this worry, but I didn't know which slide to put, so I googled worry and disappeared, so <laughs> it should work. So there is a worry about virtual reality, that uh, virtual reality is this computer-generated version of reality. That's basically the definition of it. 
<coughs> and the worry is that we are afraid of uh, it taking over, you know? We are afraid of it replacing our reality. So instead of our, our amazing real reality, we will be living in a computer program. No, and that's, that's what we are afraid of, okay? Uh, well, of, of course, for that, that's not good, basically. That doesn't sound good, no? But I have a little question, and this is... Uh, well, by the way, I didn't start right. This is not a big discovery. I, I don't think that I will tell you anything um, useful today. <laughs> but but I, I just want you to think uh, a little bit more uh, just as I thought to do this presentation. So it's just a little bit more. Put a little doubt in your heads. Uh, so maybe that will entertain you a little bit more in your lives, I don't know. But the question, the big question, the question that I was asking to myself when I was uh, thinking about the virtual reality, uh, you know, this computer-generated reality, mimic or reality, uh, isn't our brain also a computer? It is, no? I mean, we make orders, even it, it even works with electricity, so how much closer it can get. It gives orders, it manages everything, it stores and processes very uh, important data that we see in the world. It stores there and keeps it there. No? So it's kind of a computer. No? So, uh, and what is a program? What really is a program? A program is a set of orders. No? You tell a computer, look, if somebody presses one, you do this. Or if somebody presses two, you do one of these five things, and these two are 80% probabilities, and this 20%, you just choose randomly with this equation. Well, that's a program. It tells me what to do if I receive some stimuli. And it's not only one answer, I can have several answers, and I can even choose the probabilities, you know. That's how it works, no? So the other question, aren't we programmed? We are programmed. They tell us, look, you don't, do, you don't say that in front of your elders, or don't say bad words because blah, blah, blah. Don't do this. We, we are programmed. They tell us what to do through all our lives. Uh, this is exactly what the surrealists were saying. You know, the surrealists, uh, if you are not um, familiar with this, uh, the etymologically served means beyond, means higher, farther off. So the surrealists were, th were saying that this reality is fake. Is, uh, is full of routines that doesn't let us see beyond where is the real reality, the surreal uh, reality. So they were saying that society blind, that we have to wake up in the morning to go to work. We have to, that's how it works. Uh, hopefully not this early, but okay. Uh, we have to pay taxes, we have to get married. I mean, if you don't get married, come on. <laughs> no, we are programmed to get married or at least to get a, a couple and to reproduce. I mean, that's the program that they put inside us. They tell us that there are different countries and there are limits and we are not the same than the others. And we have to have national pride. Uh, they program us. We are programmed. And this computer is programmed to do that in us. So uh, for the surrealists, the total freedom that is beyond all these orders and all this program was the real reality and only is man manifested in dreams. Because the dreams make that part sleep and everything comes out without any uh, barrier. That's what they were saying, and this is an old theory. Uh, so, uh, but we, we are living in these fabricated realities, like a theater. We build it for us, and it's built for centuries. Our civilization has been building it for centuries, you see? So my question, and this is the first thing I thought when, when they told me if I can uh, talk about this reality, virtual reality, is uh, why we don't worry about the virtual reality we, we, uh, where we are living into now. Uh, that's, I want to push it to that side, because we are worrying about a virtual reality without understanding our virtual reality, and without even knowing that we are already living in a virtual reality. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not that it's amazing, the virtual reality, well, it is, but it's not that it's good, it may end wrong, but why don't we worry first about this one? We are not thinking about this one, we're just going on with the flow. And, uh, well, obviously we're programmed to be selectively blind. We're programmed not to question it. You see all the glitches, I am a Spider-Man. <laughs> that's it. We are programmed to say, no, that's how society works, that's it. No, uh, even the surrealists needed to pay bills. 
they need to live. So they were, even when they were claiming that this is not the real reality, they were living in it, and they were saying, okay, let's forget about that uh, for a while, pay me, <laughs> because I need to live. You see? So uh, yes, you turn blind on purpose. You don't want to see it so that you can uh, basically continue your life. No? Uh, we choose not to see. Why we choose not to see? Why we choose to keep some things and forget others. We need to. We need, we need it because if not, we can't put things in order. Imagine if every thi single element in the universe is the same, of the same importance for us. Uh, we will get crazy. There's nothing more important than other things. So everything is the same importance. We, we are done. We can't. We need to take some things out. We need to make some priorities in our uh, attention because we need to put some logic in the universe. We need to put some logic so that we understand it. And by the way, by logic, I mean program. We need to be programmed. A computer without a program doesn't work. You see? So let's have some examples of virtual reality. It's very simple, it's very easy. And because there's not only one, there are a lot. For example, the simplest one, relativity. You know the theory of relativity. Uh, I, you know this guy, I think, you see. Relativity says that your reality uh, depends on your point of view, basically. So for example, if uh, somebody is in outer space, okay? And let's say that that person that is in outer space can see me in, on the Earth, and the Earth is moving, no? obviously, and very fast, by the way. So because the Earth is moving, uh, this person will see me moving very fast, because it's like if I'm in a car, I'm moving very fast. The Earth is the vehicle. No? So for that person, I will be moving very fast. But if it's Sunday morning, okay? And I'm lazy in my bed. I sleep with socks, by the way. But and then suddenly my girlfriend comes in. Look, I get to choose my girlfriend in my slides, okay? <laughs> so, uh, so I don't care what you think, this is my girlfriend in my slides. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay. So, okay, my girlfriend comes in. She always dresses like that, by the way. So, and she tells me, hey, come on, don't be lazy. Uh, uh, we have to clean, help me to clean. <laughs> Very close to reality. Okay? Uh, you have to, to clean, help me to clean the flat. Uh, come on. I just, but you are lazy, no? So, from her eyes, from, oh, sorry, from her <laughs> eyes, uh, from her eyes, I am a, yes, I'm a lazy bastard. I mean, I, I don't move, I'm a lazy bastard. I, from her point of view, no? Uh, but come on, woman, <laughs> don't you understand that I am moving at 30 meters per second? I'm not lazy, come on. No, for her, I am static, for her, I'm not moving. But for the guy who hopefully is looking at me, well, hopefully, I don't know why, but <laughs> looking at me from the space, I am moving very fast. So it's a much better situation for me, you see? So we forget that we are moving. Even if we know that we are moving, we choose to forget that so that we can live here without stressing about that. You see? Uh, is we prefer to live in this fake, static life because it's true that we are moving. But we prefer not to think about that. We create our little bubble here, and we are static. You see? That's what I mean. This, this is already a virtual reality. It's not the real reality. In reality, we're moving, but in this virtual reality, we're not. Simple. It's a program. We can choose. We can swap. You see? Now, as I told you, there's more than one virtual reality. There are a lot. And we choose one. We secure it with blindness. We choose not to see the part that doesn't match our logic or program. No? And we live in, in it like a bubble. No? Uh, there are several examples of it. I mean, relativity was just one of them, but we have a lot. And the obvious one is religion. No? We have more than 4,200 religions in the world. Uh, all of them think that they are the only and the right one. No? So each 
people who is into these uh, religions, they are living in that virtual reality. Uh, as I told you, each of them is a virtual reality. Uh, even choosing not to have a religion is an act of faith. I believe that there's no God, but I, we have no idea. It's, again, an act of, act of faith, and I cover the glitches because maybe, oh, my son was miraculously he healed, and you that don't believe, that, no, that must be a coincidence. Uh, you, you, you also blind yourself in any of these situations so that it works for you, your program. That's how it works, no? Uh, you are choosing a fabricated history and a fabricated path for you to follow. That's what religion is. They tell you where, from where the world comes from and towards where you should go. Basically, that's what religion tells you. So that's a virtual reality that works for us, and we just get in. We are choosing that program somehow. That's just one example. Let's go a bit more down to earth, <laughs> literally almost. Uh, mass media. You see, uh, mass, mass media, well, it's the, the extension of our senses, no? Uh, I am here, I can't see uh, the, at the other side of the world because uh, it's very far away, uh, but I, I just watch the TV or check the internet so I can see. They help me, mass media help me to see, to expand my vision, expand my ears, etc., around the world where I can't reach. Perfect, it's brilliant, it sounds very good. The only problem is that it's managed by uh, big corporations, no? with a lot of people there, very powerful, and uh, the, um, the news, the facts are uh, open to interpretation. You interpret them, uh, the, the media interprets them, if it's good or bad, they push you a little bit, and it uh, totally can be manipulated. Uh, that actually is a photo of an actual uh, situation that happened in Peru in the, in the beginning of the 2000s. This guy was bribing this, the owners of Sun TV channel, and here's the money. <laughs> and that was the end of, the, of that uh, term, of that government. Uh, and they found like hundreds of videos of him bribing newspapers, and so it was like this, money. So it can be manipulated. You will notice. And they manipulate it in a very, very easy way. Uh, there is a... Well, in my, okay, let's say it like this, okay? Uh, how many news from the United States you see uh, in the news, when you watch the news? <laughs> you see some of them. Almost every day you will see something coming from the United States. How many news from Lithuania go to the United States? <laughs> you see? And that tells you the United States is more powerful. Even if it's not, which, well, it is, but if it, even if it wouldn't, that makes it more powerful immediately, no matter what. That's how they manipulate you. It's, uh, it's called the setting agenda. I, I choose what to put, because there are too many news. I choose which ones to put, and that already is manipulating uh, you. you. I don't need to lie. I will put the actual news, but the amount and from where they come from is already a manipulation. But of course, you also can manipulate. No? So at the end, we are choosing in which interpretation to believe, because ah, I will interpret, uh, no, these guys, because I think the United States is good. No? And uh, we can choose in which world we believe we are living in because of that. Well, we, can, we can believe that we're living in a world that where the uh, United States is a hero, as all the Americans believe, or most of them. Or, as you well know, we can think that this is a good guy, because the Russians think that, because they are being manipulated by their media. It's not that the United States is not. They are also manipulated by their media. We choose. You see, you can be in any side, and that's your virtual reality, and you believe in it, and you turn blind eye in everything that tells you no. It's very clear in political campaigns, when you have two candidates, and you believe in one, and you don't believe in the other one, and no matter what they tell about yours, you say, no, 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 he's good. You Selective blindness, you do that, because if not, your program collapses, see? Further, the senses, let's go very, very basic, is uh, how we uh, interact directly with the world. Don't, don't do this at home, yes, okay. But that's how you interact with the world, no? Uh, we believe in what they tell us, even knowing that they can fail, because they can. We know that they fail. No, we have... Uh, Suggestions, mirages, mental illnesses, hallucinations. I didn't mention drugs, but obviously drugs. 
they you and apart from that we know that there is more we have infrared light we have ultraviolet light that our senses don't perceive so there is more than what our senses can perceive uh, for example uh, the neutrinos i don't know if you know what it is Neutrinos are very tiny, tiny little particles that have almost no mass at all, and uh, they don't have electric charge. And the universe is packed of them. It's, they are everywhere, and they don't obey any law of physics. They go through us, through all the solid objects, like if they don't exist. They are everywhere. There are so many that if you put them all together, uh, the universe is more made of neutrinos than of all the rest. You see, that's how it is. So the universe is the neutrinos universe. We are a minority. So we are the ghosts in this universe, not them. You see, it's not that they are going through us. We are going through them because we are less. You see. But we're preferring to live in a reality defined by our limited senses, in this little reality, uh, even if we know by science that there is another reality out there. That's, that's the definition of virtual reality. We are living in this virtual reality even knowing that there's a bigger one outside. Uh, now I'm going hardcore. Uh, quantum mechanics. <laughs> Do you know about quantum mechanics? You will, uh, I will go through the most boring five slides in your life Okay, I will try to make them funny, but with quantum mechanics, that's very difficult. But I will try, okay? Uh, because it's very basic, uh, well, <laughs> kind of. I was very into physics, so I, I don't know, I'm a nerd. So uh, there were two very, uh, well, two maybe more, but uh, let's say two uh, very um, distinguished uh, professionals that decided uh, to do an experiment. Uh, that's a, reference, a referential photo, if I will. No? But they should have looked like that. Anyway. So what they did, I will explain. Okay, hardcore part. Okay, please don't leave. It's just a few slides. B boring as hell. Okay, forget the A, B, C. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, Th this thing is a very sensitive material. Okay, and uh, this is like a wall with two little holes, two very thin holes. And imagine uh, we send a wave here, a wave of, you know, light is a wave. So we send a wave, and when the wave hits these two um, holes, it, they, it provokes two new waves, and they interfere with each other, and that hits this wall and makes something like this, this uh, black and white thingy, okay? That's all I need you to understand. I'm going very simple because uh, I don't understand more either, so. It's <laughs> That's when you shoot waves through a wall with two little holes. You get this. That's what you have to understand from here. But when you shoot particles, particles are like little balls, let's say, you get this. You get two, two marks because there are two holes. No? Simple? Yes, simple. But now, uh, what these guys did is that uh, they went to the microscopic, super tiny world and they decided to shoot uh, particles, in this case specifically electrons, imagine how small they are, one by one, no? to see what happens. Uh, the problem was that this happened. They actually had a wave. And the only, the only, only, only explanation that they found was that when they shoot one electron, the electron has to choose through which way to go. No? The probabilities are, are that or it goes to the right, or it goes to the left, or it hits the wall and doesn't pass, or it hits the border and goes to some uh, other way. So there are a lot of probabilities. The only, the only explanation for this is that all those probabilities happened at the same time, and they hit each other and created a wave. Uh, is it all right? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the scientist said uh, in a very polite way, well, but uh, oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, so all the, as I said, all the alternatives coexist at the same time in the same place. 
How? I mean, it's not that one happened and the rest never happened. No, they all happened at the same time and hit each other. It's proven. So they decided to put a little, little camera, a little like, a, a spy, like a sensor, to see from which, which way the electron goes or to see what is happening. No? And when they put the camera, that happened. The universe knows that you are looking. <laughs> and it's weird, but it's true. They prove it. The universe knows. As soon as you see, only one possibility happened. When you are not looking, all the possibilities are happening and exist. And that's weird as hell. So that means that the universe, and you know what they did, because I, 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 I saw the interviews and everything. They actually, they were so surprised that they say, OK, this, the sensor was there. Let's disconnect it without saying anything. <laughs> uh, and they did it again, and it was waves. So they know, it, it knows. How? We don't know. But that's, that's how the universe works. And that's how this, this uh, behavior doesn't match with the relativity theory. And that's why all the physicists are trying to uh, find a unified theory that can make all this work together, but they can't until now. But okay, that's another point. Amazing. So basically, the electron chooses which reality to live in. And that means that the other ones exist. This is the proof that there are more realities than this one. It's proven because they have seen it. It's because they interact with each other. That means that the other ones exist. It's not a fantasy, you see? So knowing this, the question is pretty obvious. Well, maybe not. Uh, I, I, I can read it here. That's why it's obvious. But for you, Arno. So if we are afraid of the virtual reality replacing the real reality, which of all the real realities you are talking about? You see? So my conclusion is very short. No? Am, I, am I running? Well, that's a matter. Uh, I will tell my conclusion in, in honor to that four-year-old that I used to be. So I will tell it more or less like for him like in his terms. We don't want to become a Spider-Man in a virtual world created by a computer. We are afraid of that. Because we may not want to come back to be Spider-Man in this virtual world created by another computer. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>